yo-yo action, dude. Check him okay. out. Sleeping. Bro, bro, the people oh. are here. Welcome, everybody. Hey. It is about to go down. But people, what are we about to go into? Yo, worship. Yo, worship. Bro. Worship time. Sorry. <laughs> get your friends. Get your family. Get in the living room, people. It is time to worship, y'all. Let's Yo. roll. Let's roll. What is up, Gateway? I'm so excited to worship with you guys. So come on, stand up to your feet, and let's clap together. Come on, let's sing this out. Whatever the distance or darkness, you're with me. You're with me Whenever I'm failing or falling You've got me You've got me Sometimes we have a lot of things in this world that are making us afraid, but we serve a God, a Lord of Lords, a King of Kings, and he can do all things. He is a miracle working God. So as we sing this song, I just want us to keep that and let's praise him. Come on, let's sing this together. The one who made the blind to see is moving here in front. the deaf to hear is silencing my every fear silencing my every fear I believe in you I believe in you you're the God of miracles and I believe in you Death in its place 
That means we need like a fourth, but where, where, where would, where would the fourth guy be? Where, but does someone say something about dreams? David, what are you doing? come on, bro, get in here, dude. Oh, oh, are you Andrew. kidding me, dude? Andrew. Are you kidding me? And Jacob, guys, oh my gosh, dude, wow. yeah. don't oh. spill my tap water oh, over, we, dude. Are we moving? Are we moving? Oh, oh we're oh, here, baby. What? We're here. You're literally kicking. This is our dream now. Okay, I'm leaving. Let's see. Oh, he, uh. Big step. This water's from the uh, the lake outside. Well, you know, dreams are a funny thing. They are. You know, we've, we've had some great dreams. <laughs> Star Wars mm. dreams, we've mm. had uh, e-boy dreams, but you <laughs> yeah. know, us, we're simple. Simple. simple man. We're easy. And our dream is very is a very simple one. It is. Abram, tell me what our dream is. I'm thinking rooftops. Mm. Ooh, love ah. a good view. Wow. I'm thinking rooftops. I'm, you know what? How about some ice cream? Oh, better be Bluebell. Oh! <laughs> but the question is, Jacob, what roof? What rooftop? A really tall one. A tall one? Yeah. Grand one. One could say a holy one. Hmm. How about... A gateway church rooftop. Oh, now we're talking. How proud would Pastor Robert be of us mm. eating Bluebell ice cream on the roof of Gateway Church? Wow. He might adopt us. <laughs> Let's go.
anyway, fifth and sixth graders, we have missed you. If we haven't had a chance to meet, my name is Abram. This is my wife, Hannah, and we're so excited to hang out with you today. And if you've been hanging out with us the past couple weeks, you know that we've been in a series called Dream Vacation. Now, I don't know what your dream vacation is, but my dream vacation, even though it's not my wife's dream vacation, <laughs> my dream vacation would probably be to go to the mountains. Or if you're anything like me, your dream vacation might be a trip to Disney World. I'll be honest with you, I haven't been to Disney World since I was like 11 years old. That was 14 years ago. So I think that I need a little vacation to Disney World. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see about that. But here's what we want you to do. Um, wherever you are right now, whatever room you're in, maybe you're with parents, friends, cousins, uncles, whoever you're with, let them know right now. We're going to give you five seconds and tell them what your dream vacation is. Ready? Five seconds. We're going to count down. Five, four, three, two, one. Now, mom, dad, grandma, grandpa, whoever's in the room, I hope you heard that. And to our friends who are watching, we got your back. <laughs> Whatever your dream vacation is, I hope that you've had so much fun on this journey with us as we've talked about what our dreams are in life. Throughout this series, we've looked at the life of Joseph. And we've, gone, we've talked about things like our purpose. We've talked about how our character is the vehicle to get us to our destiny. We've talked about integrity. And now we want to talk about what happens when you reach that dream. And it's what we would call your destiny. So we've looked into the life of Joseph and we've seen that the Lord gave him a dream when he was only 17 years old, that his brothers would bow down to him and that he would become a ruler. His brothers betrayed him. They threw him in a pit. They lied to him. And then it wasn't until Joseph was 30 years old that he started to walk into his destiny. Today, we're gonna look together at Genesis 45 verses one through eight. Now at this point in the story, here's what you need to know. Joseph, he's the ruler, he's second in command in Egypt. His brothers, they live a good bit away. In the whole land, there's no food. We're talking no canes, no Chick-fil-A, no Whataburger, no McDonald's, nothing. In scripture, the Bible calls this a famine. There's no food in the land. And so what Joseph's brothers end up having to do is they have to travel all the way to Egypt because Egypt is the only place in the land where they have food stored up. Well, guess who's in charge in Egypt? The same guy they threw in the pit. It's Joseph. So when we start this scripture, you need to know, Joseph is in a room with his brothers and his brothers don't even know it's him and they're asking him for food. Let's read the scripture. Genesis 45, one through eight says this. Joseph couldn't stand it any longer. There were many people in the room and he said to his attendants, out all of you. So he was alone with his brothers when he told them who he was. Then he broke down and wept. He wept so loudly the Egyptians could hear him and word of it quickly carried to Pharaoh's palace. I am Joseph, he said to his brothers. Is my father still alive? But his brothers were speechless. They were stunned. I mean, they just threw this guy in a pit not too long ago, a couple, 10 years, 10 plus years ago, and now they're standing for him, he's in charge. They were speechless. They were stunned to realize that Joseph was standing there in front of them. Please come closer, he said to them. They came closer, probably terrified. And he said again, I am Joseph, your brother, whom you sold into slavery into Egypt. But don't be upset and don't be angry with yourselves for selling me to this place. It was God who sent me here ahead of you to preserve your lives. This famine where there's no food that has ravaged the land for two years will last five more years and there will be neither plowing nor harvesting. God has sent me here ahead of you to keep you and your families alive and to preserve many survivors. So it was God who sent me here, not you. Now I'm just wondering, really and truthfully, why wouldn't Joseph be mad at his brothers because I'm just saying his brothers really came at him with some force, right? From what we just read, they really were after him, right? So what I wanna know is why wouldn't he be mad? Because the Lord revealed to Joseph that his destiny was not to get revenge on his brothers. In fact, I believe that Joseph thought that his dream that the Lord gave him when he was 17 was that he was gonna rule over his brothers. Who wouldn't wanna rule over their brothers if they treated you that way? 
But then he quickly found out that his destiny from the Lord was to help those around him. Thousands of lives were saved and changed because of the destiny that the Lord put on Joseph's life. And I don't know what your dream is, and I don't, maybe you don't know what your dream is, and that's okay. But you know, for us, we had a dream just two years ago, a little bit before we got married. We had a dream. We want to do ministry together. Now look, here we are, standing in front of this camera, hanging out with cool people. But isn't it crazy that even though we're living in our dream, this is really more for you than it is for us. I mean, of course, we're having fun. We love this, and we're living one of our dreams. But I guess you could say it this way. Now that we're in our destiny, we realize that this this dream that we're living out in our destiny is not all about us. It's really more for you. So whenever I was in fifth grade, I actually had a dream and a passion to be a wife one day, okay? A lot of girls do, right? So I remember being so young, fifth grade, even sitting in class, which is not really good, but I would make <laughs> a list of what I wanted my husband to be like. Hair color, eye color, what he would wear, what kind of car he would drive, what kind of job he would have. <laughs> I had those kind of dreams about being a wife, and look, I'm a wife. <laughs> We're married. We're here. I'm living out my dream. But here's the thing. When I wanted to be a wife in fifth grade, I thought, I just want to be a wife and wear a pretty ring and that's it. <laughs> Boom. But I quickly realized, right, that becoming a wife wasn't going to be about me, but it was going to be to serve Abram as my husband, to love him and bless him how the Lord created a wife to love and bless their husbands, right? So I don't know how old you are. Maybe you're watching this. I don't know what your dream is. And you're like, man, I'm really young. I don't know what to do. Maybe you, you like playing sports. Maybe you like to paint. Maybe you like to sing. Whatever it is, I hope you realize now and you can catch this, that God's dream for you is not for you to just become great and be famous for you. God's dream is for you to become great so that you can bless and help those around you. So you say, okay, Abram and Hannah, I get it, I understand, I'm going to find my purpose, and when I find it, I'm gonna have integrity and good character, but here's the deal, I'm really young, so what do I do now? Relax, enjoy the journey, and maybe you don't even know what your dream is, that's okay. Our pastor, Pastor Robert, says this. He says, if you don't know God's dream for your life, just get to know God. So relax. Enjoy the journey. Your dreams will become your destiny. Stay faithful and love the Lord. We love you guys so much. See you soon. Man, that message was good, mm. just like our blue belt was. Come on, there's mm. Well, we finished our series, Dream Vacation. Thank you so much for coming on this vacation with us. And what happened? We got to our destination, and it wasn't even about us. Whew. It was about the kingdom. That's mm. right. Mm. Wow. Well, next week we have a brand new series for all you fifth and sixth graders. You're not going to want to miss it. We got big things coming. Cheers.